we are going through so many challenges in terms of economics problems, people are not getting jobs. As of job, we need more jobs. We need more jobs. A whole lot to do in Ghana. In your mayor tone, Bokana Watu. Mass suits can be a look out of my four boxing. It was there to three box. Very hard. Very hard. Yeah, very hard. Because on Jin, you know, in power. Businesses are collapsing. And the unfortunate thing is, even our light bills are not even going down. This thing has been happening for three years now. We get light in the day for only two days. Only two days. So out of the five days, it means you can work for only two days. And this is very bad. I asked him if he had ever been offered a bribe before. Um, you mean as president? As John Mahama. As a human being? As a person. What are you going to do about this astonishing rate of uh, inflation? You're hitting 15%. People are suffering in, a, in very tangible ways. We've seen scenes in Accra that we don't usually associate with Ghana at all. It is time for them to fix the problem. If they can't fix the problem, then they must give way to another government who to take over and run the affairs of our country. The only way we can guarantee the future of Ghana is to remove John Dramani Mahama from power and bring in the MPP to rebuild our country. With the background of hopelessness and dejection that had en enveloped the entire country, we fashioned a manifesto to change the situation. And so that's how our manifesto was titled Change an agenda for jobs. That I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. So help me God. For many Ghanaians, this victory in 2016 came with a renewed hope. The new patriotic party had also won majority in Parliament. It will not be easy. We have no illusions whatsoever. It will require sacrifice, but it can be done. But after victory came reality. And with a record time, the new president formed and announced key members of his government. They are the men and women who will drive his vision, making it clear to them that there was no time to waste. Uh, simply about that, about getting development, if you like, to the grassroots. Uh, the task ahead was enormous. His first major task was to ensure that power was stable in the country in order to get small businesses and industries that had collapsed under the Mahama administration back to work. To do this, we needed to find the money because one of the major causes of doing so was lack of money to buy fuel for the operation of our plants. Nigeria had refused to give us gas as a result of huge debts. And the president negotiated with Nigeria. And Nigeria agreed to restore gas supply to Ghana. I had to buy generators. And it was not easy at all at the time. We are so happy that today you get up, there is electricity, there is power to do everything. It takes a leader that has the confidence of his peers, you know, to be able to broker such arrangements that we got within the short period. After years of doom so, the lights were finally back for good. Agriculture has been the bedrock of Ghana's economy since time immemorial. The launch of the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative in April 2017, four months in office by the President, encouraged Ghanaians to take farming more seriously than in recent past. Through this program, agriculture is once again a respectable and profitable venture that is creating jobs. The direct benefits are two. First of all, his income doubles troubles because those who are doing harvesting three, four bags, uh, 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 eking out, uh, 
from an acre of land can now do 10, 15, 20, 40 bags. I've seen it in Tumu area, where by just by changing, using improved seed and fertilizer, their yields just go using the same sweat. This is how you have it. You can see Come back to a factory. You have been here for school. You have been here for your mommy. You have been here for your nana. You see, you have been here for your nana. You have been here for your nana. You have been here you have to go up to the rural area to see the kind of prosperity this engagement is bringing to them. It's making them very, very comfortable. The poverty is being tackled head on. Today, the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative has brought renewed hope and energy creating jobs, reducing poverty, and improving food security across the country. It's been after many years of neglect by the exile Bahama-led administration. I think today you see leadership that is responsive to the challenges of the Ghanaian people. Leadership that is also very committed to improving the quality of life of every Ghanaian, not just a few people. The first term of President Akufuado's leadership has not even ended, yet so much has been achieved. Within months in office, nurses and teachers who were abandoned by the Mahama-led administration were empowered with the restoration of their allowances. The National Health Insurance Scheme was immediately given a new lease of life with the payment of the 1.2 billion Ghana City arrears. Leakages at the country's ports have been sealed with the introduction of paperless ports. To augment operations of the National Ambulance Service and to save lives, 307 new ambulances were distributed to all 275 constituencies across the country. Another fulfillment of a campaign pledge, one constituency, one ambulance. As a first step in the fight against corruption, the Office of the Special Prosecutor has been established. With a promise to create jobs for the youth, he created NAPCO or the Nation Builders Call, which is giving jobs to thousands of young graduates. Industrialization was another major aspect of the president's grand plan to transform Ghana. The one district, one factory policy was born out of the need to diversify the economy and create jobs for the Ghanaian people. So far, 232 companies and projects have been established and are at various stages of implementation. They are spread throughout the country in different districts, in different regions, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Everything here has been thought of, designed, built, and is now being run by Ghanaians. What we see here are very young people we picked some from the university, some from industry, um, some from the streets. We are testimony to this fact that the idea that Nanado initiated and is championing is actually bringing a transformation in the lives of people. Just an idea from an individual, from an individual can just change a life like that. But it goes beyond that because it is also capturing new enterprises at the same time capturing existing enterprises that were completely demobilized and almost dead, which have been resurrected. Then 2013, 14, 15, I said they had to And I got to know you. I have to know you. I see, I said 2020, and I to say, I to one factory. So, so, so I share a human asylum. The One District, One Factory initiative is an economic landmark, empowering the private sector to grow. Several factories are up and running since its launch in August 2018.
Gazette number 12 of 2019, and thereby creating the Northeast region and sign the instrument. Following the country's constitution, President Akufuado led the creation of six new regions, empowering several communities that have been deprived of development. Using his long no negotiating skill, peace has finally come to Dagbon. The presidential pitch, an initiative to support young entrepreneurs and the needy with startup capital, has become his regular routine. Bottlenecks in the banking sector, which were collapsing the country's economy, is now cleaned up. As part of an agenda to digitize Ghana, an ambitious infrastructure development program for the ICT sector with the national broadband infrastructure is ongoing. September 2017, school children from across the country wave their flag with excitement. For the first time in the country's history, senior high education is made free across the country. A government may not be able to make every citizen rich, but with political will and responsible leadership, a government can help create a society of opportunities and empowerment for every citizen. And I know no better way to do so but through access to education. The education of the Ghanaian child is something dear to President Ekufwado. Through this policy, a record one million children have access to secondary education in Ghana. He is the driver and mover of free SHS. As we speak, apart from we doing the technical work, to support his The free SHS program is under the office of the president. For him to bring free education, women who ordinarily go and sell their clothes to make sure that the children are sent to school or there's food on the table, now would not sell their clothes again but will have their children in school. Across the country, many parents and students have shared various testimonies on the overwhelming success of the free senior high school policy and how it is securing their future. In 2001, I lost my father, and in 2008, I lost my mother. If not because of the introduction of the free SHS, I wouldn't be here, and my vision is to become a nurse in future, so that I'll be able to help my community and the nation at large. When you talk about infrastructure projects, there's, there's no comparison. Because, let me give you an example. When you take a 12-unit classroom, we did 165. When you talk about three-unit classroom blocks, all in secondary school, we have done 60. When you talk about six-unit classroom blocks, we've done 173. We have done about three times more than the SDC ever thought in their mind. By 2016, most of the country's road networks were in terrible condition. Everywhere the new president went, the plea of the people was for him to rescue the sector. I'm happy I came here today to see this for myself. I think, uh, Mr. Engineer, there's a lot more work that needs to be done for us to be able to find a satisfactory way out for the future. Without much delay, the president personally embarked on a mission to radically change the face of Ghana's road network. The uh, road sector serves as the pivot, the fulcrum around which the economic development of the country uh, revolves. So, it's as if the president went to work, government you know, tackled the poor, deteriorated road infrastructure of our country from the very beginning. For the first time in the history of this country, four interchanges are being built simultaneously. We can talk about Bukwasi interchange, we can talk about uh, uh, Tema interchange, we are working on Obi Chebilamte interchange, Tamale interchange, under Sando Hadro is in currency. We are going to uh, cut salt for Takradi interchange at the PTC roundabout, you know, making it five. It has never happened in the history of this country. The country's railway sector can today boast of modern terminals and coaches. 
a 670 kilometer greenfield railway corridor linking the southern part of Ghana to Paga is underway and so is the railway interconnectivity project between the port of Tema and Ouagadougou, the capital of Burkina Faso. Water has been supplied to many rural communities while the One Village One Dam initiative is making irrigation in several farming communities easy. Aggressive sports infrastructural development is being undertaken in many communities across the country, taking sports closer to the youth. Construction is underway for Ghana's first creative art school, while a court to protect Ghanaian musicians and the arts will be up within the next few weeks. In 2019, the Year of Return program injected billions of dollars into the Ghanaian economy and saw an increase in tourist arrivals. To date, over 450,000 people around the world have died because of coronavirus. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic took the world by surprise. No country in the world prepared for it. Even nations regarded as superpowers are grappling to deal with it. But leadership may have determined the survival of citizens in every nation. President Ekufuado is meeting with various stakeholders to assess the nation's preparedness. The Ministry of Health has announced that two cases of COVID-19... Ghana is investigating two suspected By the 12th of, of March, virus. Ghana had recorded her first two cases. At this point, decisive leadership is key. Those were heady moments in the government. Those were very difficult moments. And even if you want fear in the system. But out of all of that, he showed extraordinary leadership. He was very steady, very focused, and very calm. Midnight in Accra, and the nation is sleeping. President Ekufuado is meeting with his top COVID-19 medical advisors and the vice president. They are assessing the possibility of a reasonable lockdown. But the president was firm that a total lockdown cannot be considered. His major concern was the informal sector and the vulnerable in society. Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. I've come to your homes once With again. With truth and openness to the people, the president made his address to the nation a frequent routine. These are not ordinary times. So let us all put our shoulders to the wheel. And I'm confident that together, by the grace of God, we shall overcome this challenge. It is said that tough leaders are made for tough times. The leadership provided by President Ekufuado in these COVID times is unparalleled. He rallied and empowered local pharmaceutical companies and the manufacturing industry to provide essentials such as PPEs and hand sanitizers. Water was made free for all Ghanaians. Electricity was also made free for the poor with 50% reduction for high consumers. Hot meals were provided for the needy and vulnerable in society. We know what to do to bring back our economy back to life. What we do not know is how to bring people back to life. He wanted to see what the people were being fed with, how we feed them, the number of people that congregate that we say they are not observing the social distancing. And this was something that I didn't think the president would take in interesting. Knowing that the most affected by the COVID are small businesses, the president launched the One Billion Ghana City Business Support Scheme. To date, 120,000 beneficiaries, micro, small and medium enterprises have benefited from this fund. 60% of these beneficiaries are women. From this crisis comes a lesson. President Ekufuado recognizes that Ghana has to make significant investment in the public health system and has immediately began construction of 88 new district hospitals, all to be completed within a year. The world is looking at Ghana. You would be surprised at the sort of interactions I've had from locally from Nigeria and elsewhere. They're very proud of us. I am not surprised that he stands tall amongst um, his peers, both in Africa and in the world. 
It's thoughtful leadership that thinks about the people. It thinks about the grassroots. It thinks about changing the lives of people. It's not selfish leadership. If Ghana wants to become a big player in the global economy, the way forward is to industrialize. President Nana Kufuado is doing exactly that. Continuity is in the interest of Ghana. Continuity is in the interest of the economy of Ghana. Continuity is in the interest of the youth of Ghana. Because with continuity, we can consolidate the gains and protect the gains that we've made and ensure that we unleash the full potential of the Ghanaian people and the Ghanaian youth. Four years of change has been, in my view, um, so far so good. Um, and, but we are, it is not yet Uhuru, as they say. We haven't gotten there yet. But it is important that we protect the gains that we have made in four years. Under the leadership of President Nana Adodankwe Kufuadu and the NPP, the bar of leadership in Ghana has been raised. The foundation plans for Ghana's transformation is being laid. Investor confidence in Ghana has been built with global corporations such as VW, Sinotruck and others setting up their manufacturing plants in Ghana. For the first time since the formation of the African Union, Ghana is headquarters of a major body, the African Continental Free Trade Area.